Okay, yeah, so... My recording cut out again. So that's why the video kind of ended like it did. But apparently it was 58 minutes and 28 and 25 seconds, so... Yeah. Swell. I looked back over the video, the previous video, and I found I actually messed up with her design a bit. So I'm gonna fix that here in a second and actually show you guys how you can change the Arphasis after post first creation oh or you know you could just read that <laughs> just pause the video when you want to read these えないければいけないことはまだまだあります。手掛ける前には準備を万全にしましょう。外は弾丸飛び交う。あ、街の中は安全です。他者を攻撃できるのはフィールドか。まあ、どんな場所でも私がいれば安心です。敵が出てもズ
Yeah, well, I'm not bothering with the inbox. <laughs> I have to go through enough of that as is. Okay, there we go. Now I've got control back. Need to fix the eyebrows. That's the one I fucked up. So the eyebrows were supposed to be default. I forgot about that. There we go. Fixed. Fix her up. There we go. Oh, right. The little eyeball symbol next to these accessories basically do this. And when you shut it off with square and shut the eyeball, it's not viewable. But now that's not what I was going to have equipped. item drop rate and another huh. item drop rate okay well anyway slap that on ah uh, yes you're probably wondering why the dual wielding well, it's an ability you can unlock in the game. It's uh, further into the game than where I'm at right now. But it carries over on the new game plus. There's dual wheeling and then the gun and sword art. By pressing the triangle button to switch special gear, you can have, like, for example, see how I just have the sword Ameno Murakumo G2? By pressing triangle, I'm also wielding a pist- a dual wielding a pistol with it. So instead of just wielding a sword, I'm wielding both a gun and a sword. And yeah, where is this one? Like the SMG Spiral Shadow 4. You can only dual wield. I said a second. Spiral Shadow 4. Oh, excuse me. But yeah. Uh, okay. Quick rundown on how to get different outfits. Basically, you go and you do hunting quests. Complete the hunting quests, and you get a design, which you take to Asuna in Kirito's room. And if you have certain materials, you can make the and the design you have the you can make the outfit. Yes, she is basically the clothing shop in the game. The outfits don't really do anything for your stats; they're more cosmetic than anything. What really does it for your stats is uh, your weapons. And your accessories. And also, well, your stat points. As you can see, you have six different stat points in the game. Well, six different stats in the game. Strength, vitality, inte intellect, agility, dexterity, and luck. I'll just read these for you. Strength affects melee damage. So basically your sword damage. Your gear weight limit, which is right there as you can see above the HP bar and your ability to equip different weapons what it means by that is this sword right here requires a strength of 72 and a dexterity of 43 you have to have a certain amount of certain stats in order to wield certain weapons as well as gear limit the gear limit you can basically equip whatever you want oh excuse me you can basically equip, equip whatever you want, assuming you have the right stats. But the gear limit determines how fast or how slow you move. If you're below the gear limit, or the gear weight limit, you're able to move normally. However, if you're above the gear weight limit, basically you go over it, you'll move slower. And trust me, it's a bitch and a half. But yes, anyway, uh, back to what I was doing. Vitality affects your maximum HP.
your maximum HP, your uh, defense, and your resistance to status ailments. Basically what that means is maximum HP is pretty much self-explanatory. Your, you know, max HP. Uh, your defense, self-explanatory too. Your defense. As you can see, I've got a defense power of 4,164. Trust me, later on in the game, that does not m make for much of a difference especially on extreme mode right now I'm playing on easy mode so that way I can kind of go through the game quickly and show you guys all this stuff without getting killed over and over and over <laughs> but trust me extreme is pretty self-explanatory it is extreme and you fucking let's just say sniper enemies if they hit you in the head you're instantly dead no matter how high your defense is uh, oh, and your resistance to status ailments. Basically, whether... That basically determines how hard it is for enemies to inflict status ailments on you. Your intellect affects skill and gadget affects recharge, recharge times. That basically means it increases the effect that the skill or gadget has and also lowers the recharge time. Not by a great amount, but as you can see, I have 200 intellect. So that means my stuff recharges pretty fast. As well as status ailment attacks. Basically, I'm not sure what that means exactly. It could mean either how much easier it is for you to inflict enemies with a status ailment, or how much damage that status ailment does, like say, blaze or uh, poison. Poison is self-explanatory. It'll drain the victim's HP over time for as long as it's active and pretty much the same thing with blaze although with blaze you're on fire instead of poison agility affects a number of different things including movement speed weapon handling the steadiness of your bullet circle and defense the movement speed is self-explanatory basically how fast you run Weapon handling basically means, like, I want to say the steadiness of the weapon? I'm not sure. Uh, the steadiness of your bu bullet circle. Basically, how often your bullets will hit when you use your bullet circle. If you noticed in the last video, I had this thing called assist mode on. That basically allows you to hit enemies that are in within that uh, target area. And the reticle basically follows them. <clears throat> Unless they get behind you or out just outside of the uh, assist mode uh, sight. But yeah. And you notice the ring that showed up that got bigger when I shot, continuously shot. It basically affects the steadiness of that. And how often the bullets will actually hit. And the defense is already explained. There are basically three stats in this game that raise your defense. Vitality, Agility, and Luck. Now, Dexterity affects damage dealt by critical attacks and to weak spots. Basically, it increases how much damage you do when you land a critical hit. And what I mean by that is, the critical hit you do, the damage upon that critical hit is increased as well as how much damage you deal to weak spots like for example the head or some enemies have a little like jewel on them that is also a weak spot uh, the accuracy of your bullet circle that's self-explanatory basically how often the bullets will actually hit even at a, the bu bullet circle being like super wide. Uh, gadget power, basically how much damage certain gadgets can do. And weaponry, basically the other stat you need to wield certain weapons. Luck affects item drop and critical hit rates, defense, and also reduces damage from status ailments. Now, the item drop rate 
the item drop and critical hit rates is pretty self-explanatory. Item drop rate, basically how often an item will drop for when an enemy is defeated. And critical hit rates, basically how often you'll actually do a critical hit. Defense, already explained, and the reduces damage from status ailments. Basically, how much damage, like, say, po the poison status ailment or the blaze status ailment will do over time. So, yeah, that's pretty much how all that works. Next, you have your skills. These are basically your bread and butter. There's a wide range of them. There's some for pistols, for uh, shotguns. A lot of these skills can be shared among all uh, for between all nine uh, weapons. I say nine, but one of them is basically just a dual wielding version, but it counts as separate. At least I think it's nine. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. So, some of these skills can be used by all nine weapon categories, but some are tailored to one specific weapon or, well, one or two specific weapons. But yeah, there's uh, handguns, shotguns, submachine guns, assault rifles, sniper rifles, Gatling guns, launchers. Now that goes for grenade launchers and rocket launchers. Swords and gun and swords. Well, guns and swords. My bad. But yeah. Personally, I like gun and, guns and swords and submachine guns. But you could pretty, pretty much use whatever setup you like. Be it handguns, shotguns, submachine guns. Basically any of them. My next favorite, aside from assault rifle or submachine guns, is assault rifles. And then the third would have to be uh, Gatling guns. Though I don't mind taking on a rocket launcher on occasion. But yeah. Oh, you can also check your stuff like uh, your weapons, your first, your weapon one skill, your weapon two skills, your gadgets, and your weapon proficiencies. As you can see, I've pretty much got all but two maxed out, and that's because I'm not really good with sniper rifles, and I haven't really done anything with uh, launchers. I just don't use it that often. And like I said before, I am shit with sniper rifles. But, uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, you can also check the, stat the stats of your uh, allies that you take with you. You can have a total of three extra allies with you at a time. Which makes for raising their affinity gauges much easier. And the Arphasis is the only one that's exactly like the uh, CAC. And that the Arphasis can use any type of weapon, can use any type of skills, and whose stats can be raised pretty much like the character like the CACs but anyway uh let me think oh yes what I said about affinity gauges that would be this as you can see the affinity rank is one the highest affinity the lowest affinity rank is level one zero percent is rank one zero uh, percent while the highest rank is rank 4, 100%. In order to get... There are three endings in this game. There's... The, I don't want to spoil what the endings are. But they pertain to... Two certain characters in the game. And then there's the true ending. In order to get the true ending... You have to get the main character the fatal bullet characters like the Arphasis, Korea and uh, two others up to uh, affinity rank four 
75% at the least. While uh, these characters right here that you see don't count, nor do the uh, DLC characters, which are these characters. But uh, but then for like Kirito and the uh, SAO gang and the rest of the SAO gang, including the game only characters such as Felia, Straya, Rain, and Premier, you have to uh, well now Felia, Straya, Rain, and Premier, you also have to get up to Affinity rank for seventy five percent, while. Kirito and the gang from the uh, SAO anime and uh, manga, you have to get up to at least rank 2. But I figure if you're going to bother with raising their affinity rank up to at least rank 2, you might as well just finish them out anyway. Oh, you also have to see uh, special event cutscenes that you can only get from raising their affinity ranks and whatnot. And once you do, well, view them, and you'll get this item called the Arphasis Amulet. It's a key item that you get from the Arphasis for getting the affinity ranks up to where they need to be, and being a mode called Kirito Mode where you play as Kirito. You have to play this. I would recommend playing it from the mo the moment the minute you get the notification that you have it because once you reach a certain point in the game, the mode will be locked again and you will not be able to play it unless you start new game plus or rewind time. But anyway, oh shit. Didn't mean to do that. But, I, well, you know what? I'm just gonna go solo. But, uh, yeah. And trust me, when you're first trying to do these affinity ranks, it's a bitch and a half. But when you beat the game and you get New Game Plus, you can get this item called the Nostalgic Echo. Which makes it easier to raise a character's affinity rank. And then, also, you can get these items called the Memories Of. Which are basically for... <coughs> There's a memory of love... Lo of uh, the Arvisus, memory of Korea, so on and so forth, that makes it even easier. So you couple that with the Nostalgic Echo, you'll be raising the Affinity rank quite easily. I'll even show you guys how you get one of the uh, Affinity or Memories of items here in a second, like this. And there you go. <laughs> yep. The Arphasis, the uh, memories of Arphasis, you get from giving your Arphasis 100 million credits. I think it's 100 million. Then, but then again, it might be only 100 thousand. No, it's a uh, 100 million. No, we're not going to do a haircut. Oh, you can also, like, prioritize certain things, like, uh... You can set the, uh, Arphasis to prioritize healing or, uh, attacking. You can set it to attack on battle start or to attack upon sighting an enemy. Prioritize, prioritize attacking or healing. Uh, wait, that's the same thing. Oh, uh, well, yeah, or, or even prior to prioritize reviving. That's basically how it is. And the emotes are basically what express expression. Bright, stoic, cute, zealous, serious. Let's go stoic. But there. But yeah. 
That's how you get one of the memories up. The rest are in tre treasure chests. They're spread out all throughout the game. Not just in one single area, but in every area in the game. And you have to locate them quick. You have to locate them. The hardest one is the memories of Kirito, which I'll show you later on when we get to the area where it is. But I'll show you the easiest way. I actually looked this up on YouTube, so you can look it up for yourselves. But I'll show you anyway. But not right now. Anyway, I've spent enough time blabbing on. Let's get let's get to you through the game. <laughs> I'm sorry. あたしを待たすなんていい度胸ね。ほら、立つだと行くわよ。松はこの辺りを回ってね。GGO そんな設定だから武器や防具はお店でも買えるけど強力なレア武器のほとんどはドロップ品やクエストの報酬よ攻略情報は攻略サイトでまとめられているけど最新のネタはやっぱり街で集めないとねああ、yes、oh, yeah, something else I should explain about weapons uh, weapons go from ranks 1 to, I think it was originally, I want to say originally 10, because that's how high it could go when I got the game. I'm not sure, do not quote me, that is just what I'm assuming. It might have been lower, I don't know. But, after the, uh, update, that increased the level cap from, uh, the last level cap from 225 to this newest one, which is 250, uh, the weapons rank can now go up to rank 11. However, you can only find weapons with their rank 11, and they are super rare. The only way you can really find them is play on extreme mode and go to, like, uh, some of the last areas in the game. Damn, I've probably spent most of this video just explaining shit. ドアは私がいるからいいけど、ちゃんと道を覚えてよ。グロッケンはメロみたいな場所があるから。おい。あんたの連れているそれってアパシスだろ。よく借りたな。私はタイプ すげえ、キャプチャしてもいいですかタイプ タイプ X なら30メガクレジットを出すという方がいるんですよ。悪くない話だと思いますが、いかがです？30メガクレジット？日本円にすると30万円だよ。ダメです。私はマスターのものなのです。そうですよね、マスター。当然の結論です、マス
I would suggest playing on extreme mode. That's the only way you can get the really good stuff and only way some shops are open. ここは実質の私、Oh, hey, you can see Korea over there. I never noticed that before. これ、レアアイテムをいくつか持っててさ。格安で譲るから。いい人ですね。ありがとう。部屋や。で、やめときな。半端な知識じゃ騙されるぞ。失礼な。私の知識は完璧です。おじさん。おじさん。しかもその2
僕がみんなをくんと呼ぶのは分けあいをビスにすると勘違いしちゃう女の子が多くてだいってね冗談だよそれでさ君に一つ君はどうして NPC のアファシスを助けようとしたんだいこの前の大会の録画データが手に入ってさ参加者の戦いの様子を見てその中で君は切りかかるキリト君と戦おうとすらせずにだアファシスをかばった確かにアファシスはレアアイテムだけど君が殺されたら手に入れられそれともあの時点でマスター登録が済んでいたのかあの大会の中で君のあの行動だけが理解できなかったなんだろう<笑>もしよかったら理由を教えてくれないかな君は理屈によらず動くことができない失礼まあ大した知り合いでもない僕の質問に虚偽や誇張を加え君はいい人だマスターここにいたんですねこれはおっと用事の途中だったのかあじゃあ僕SBC グロッケンの主な施設はこんなところよ変なおじさんもいたけど面白いとこでしょ他にもいろんなショップや情報屋がいたりするけどその辺は自分で探してみた方が楽しいと思うわ一周するだけでも結構歩いたわねこれからどうしようかどこかでお茶でもするマスターメールが来ましたいいじゃない早速行ってみようよはい。I'm out.